Are you struggling to make your first hundred dollars on Medium? Are you tired of publishing your articles to avoid where no one seems to see your work? In this video, I'm going to share with you my best tips for writing on Medium so that your hard work gets more views and makes more money. If you're new to my channel, my name is Corey Alexander and I'm a writer and content creator. It's my mission to share with you everything I know about how to make money online with your writing. So if you want to stay up to date on all my latest tips on how to make money with your writing, click the subscribe button below and that way you'll be kept in the loop every time I upload a new video. Okay, so let's talk about Medium. I've been actively writing on Medium for about nine months on a part-time basis. And even though I'm by no means one of the top earners on the platform, I have made a pretty respectable chunk of change in the short time that I've been there. And it's become a really major part of my business. I went from earning $17.40 back in April of 2021 to $1,685.21 less than three months later in June. So I'm living proof that you don't need to be writing on Medium full time or to be a veteran who's been writing there for years to make significant income with this platform. So I wanted to share some tips with you that I have personally found to be really beneficial based on my experience. And if you're really struggling to make a go of Medium, I think you'll find these tips helpful. Tip number one, my first and foremost tip, learn from the masters. So I have to give credit where credit is due. I did not get to four figure months after 90 days by figuring it out myself. I took an online course called the Medium Writing Academy by Sinem Gunnell, and that really helped me figure out what I needed to do to be successful on the platform as a newbie. Honestly, it's a great course. And if you really want a deep dive into Medium, you should definitely go check it out. And that's not a sponsored plug or anything. I'm just telling you that's what I did. And it's not like there's any one secret where all of a sudden you're like, aha, now I know how to write a viral article and make four figures a month. Rather, a good course takes all the information you need and consolidates it in one place so that it takes all the guesswork out of what you're doing and you're not just aimlessly searching around the internet for answers and putting a strategy together piecemeal. What you're getting is a roadmap that streamlines the learning process. So quite honestly, if you're serious about making medium work, it is worth paying to learn from someone who's done it because in the months that it would take you to sort of piece it together yourself, you could already have a medium strategy together and making it work for you. But even if you don't want to take a course, you can and should still identify writers on the platform who are crushing it and whose success you want to emulate. Read their work and try to figure out what it is they're doing that's working for them. This alone can be a really powerful way to figure out what kind of content works well on the platform, how you should structure your articles, and which publications you should submit your pieces to. Tip number two, stick to a broad niche. Niches are kind of a hot topic on Medium because there are two camps. There are those who stick to niches and those who pretty much write about whatever they want. And honestly, I see top writers in both camps. So it's true that you don't strictly need to write about one niche to be successful on Medium. But from what I've experienced on the platform, it's a little bit harder to form your tribe when you are writing about different topics all the time, because each time you publish a new piece, you're not necessarily appealing to the same readership. So for example, there are some authors on the platform who I follow because they wrote a piece that really resonated with me, but then I'll end up passing over their next two or three articles that show up in my feed because those subsequent pieces aren't about topics I'm interested in. On the flip side, there are writers I follow where I will actually go to their profile page and see if they've published anything recently because they always publish about this topic I'm really interested in and I want to see their latest work. So that's why for the most part, I choose to stay focused on one topic, which on my primary account is health and fitness. Now and then I do like to mix things up a little bit and I'll publish a short story or a personal essay because I really wanted to write those pieces but nine out of 10 articles I publish are in the health and fitness niche. But the thing to note here is that health and fitness is a really broad niche. There's a million different subtopics within that niche that I can write about. So I never really feel boxed in or limited by what I can write. For example, sometimes I write about food and diet. Other times I write about my favorite workouts. Sometimes I even write about mental health. That way I never get bored as a writer, but the topics I write about are similar enough to consistently appeal to my readers. Another benefit to sticking with one niche is that you generally publish in the same publications all the time, and the readers who follow that publication will see your name come up again and again, and you kind of get established within that community. 
I find I have had more success when I have stuck to publishing in one or two publications than in the early days when I was trying to get published in as many publications as possible. Now, a few months ago, I got this bug that I really couldn't shake where I wanted to write on everything I've learned about making money online with my writing. Because my online writing business is something I'm really passionate about and I can talk about it all day. But it's so different from the health and fitness niche that I decided to open up a second account called Corey Who Writes, which subsequently inspired this YouTube channel. And having those two accounts has really worked out for me. Tip number three, find medium centric topics to write about. So I found that some types of articles do better on medium than others. It really is a place for sharing unique perspectives and ideas. And if you can get a handle on the kind of content that really resonates with the medium readership, you will do so much better than if you just write about whatever you want. So once you've decided on that broad topic that you're going to mostly write about, go to Medium and look up that content in the search bar. Then take note of the articles that come up and the related tags. What articles are doing well? What themes come up over and over again? But if you need more help coming up with Medium-centric topic ideas, I did discover a little hack using an AI writer that has really worked well for me. I did another video all about it and you can check it out right here. My fourth tip is to draw heavily from your personal experiences. One of the biggest mindset shifts I had to make as someone coming to Medium from a freelancing and blogging background was that Medium is more than just a place for informational articles. There's a strongly personal community-based element to it that makes it different from the content you read anywhere else on the internet. Now, your article should still be about the reader in that you're still focused on serving them with your content in some way, whether you're teaching them something new or entertaining them or introducing an interesting new concept. But the content also needs to be engaging on a personal level. This is not the place for run-of-the-mill informational articles that are a dime a dozen on the internet. It's the human element of medium that really makes or breaks you as a writer. So people want more than just a straight up listicle or how-to article. They want to know your personal experiences and what you learn from them. Believe it or not, almost all of my top performing articles on Medium have the word I in them. For example, I burned a thousand active calories per day for a month and here's what happened or five fitness truths I learned about fitness from reaching my goal weight, or how I boosted my metabolism by 20%. But those articles were popular not because I was talking about myself, but because I was sharing what I learned from those experiences, and the reader can then learn from them as well. So you absolutely can still write a listicle or a how-to article, but to really make that connection with your audience, you want to infuse your personality and experiences into those pieces. Tip number five is to spend more time on your headlines. Headlines can feel kind of elusive and getting them right is an ongoing process. Honestly, I am still learning to craft better headlines with every piece that I write. I often think of a better one right after I hit the publish button, but the headline is so important, as important as the article itself, because it's your one chance to convince a reader to click on your article and read it but you don't want your headline to be too sensational or clickbaity because then Medium won't curate those articles, which means they likely won't reach as wide an audience. So the goal is to create intrigue without resorting to any sort of extremes. And I have found that there are certain words that if you use them in your headline, then Medium won't curate the article. For example, these days I have a pretty high curation rate, which means that Medium distributes the majority of the articles I publish. But every once in a while, they won't. And when that happens, I strongly suspect it has something to do with my headline. For instance, anytime I include the word weird in my headline, Medium doesn't curate it. It could be a coincidence, but to be on the safe side, I have stopped using the word weird in my headlines. So it's really important to set aside some real time in your writing process to contemplate your headlines. Analyze which of your articles perform well and which ones don't, and use the data from that to craft better headlines. There are a couple of free tools you can use to help you out with your headlines. My favorite of which is called the Share Through Headline Analyzer, and I will leave a link to that in the description box. Just remember to take its feedback with a grain of salt. For example, it will always tell you that longer headlines perform better, which I think is true in general, but sometimes a short headline can be really impactful if done right. So I don't always take its suggestions, but it's a great tool to start with if you're really struggling to write engaging headlines. Tip number six, resist the urge to rush the publishing process. 
So when you've done all this hard work on your article and it's ready to go, the temptation is to slap the publish button and just get it live and on the internet as soon as possible. And a lot of people are so impatient to get their work out there that they will either self-publish or they'll publish to one of those catch-all publications that publish everything and everyone. So in case you're not sure what publications are about, they're basically like magazines or communities within Medium. Some publications are actually run by Medium, but any writer can create a publication and the majority of publications are run by other Medium writers. Most successful publications will publish a specific type of content. For example, the one that I mostly publish to is called In Fitness and In Health, which as you may have guessed, exclusively publishes health and fitness topics. Publications are extremely beneficial because it lends your work a far wider reach than if you just self-published it. But getting published in a publication adds a few extra steps to the process. For one thing, each publication has its own guidelines and submission requirements. Also, when you submit a piece to a publication, there's no guarantee that they will accept your work. And in some of the more popular publications, it's quite common to have your piece rejected. Not only that, but sometimes you have to wait anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks to hear back if your piece is accepted. So because there's all these extra steps involved, a lot of people just can't be bothered. So they'll send it somewhere where they know it'll get published right away, or they will simply self-publish to their profile. Now I have heard of some medium writers who claim their self-published article went viral. So it may be possible, but I believe it's the exception and not the rule. I would say the majority of the time, if you self-publish an article, you're going to get very few views. And publishing in one of those catch-all publications is almost as bad sometimes because those publications are putting out dozens of articles every day on every kind of topic under the sun, and it's really easy for your work to just get buried under it. All this is to say that after you've done all this hard work to write your article, take that extra time to shop it around and find the ideal publication for it. It may add a few extra days, even a couple extra weeks to the process, but it's way more likely to pay off than to just publish it wherever and greatly diminish your chances of getting views. My seventh and final tip is to give the platform a real chance. So I'm not going to lie to you, as a new writer on Medium, the first couple of months are a little bit of a grind. And I think a lot of the time what happens is people will publish one or two articles, they'll see they only get like 10 views after a week, and then they'll give up. Which is exactly what I did back in 2018 when I first heard about Medium. I syndicated two articles from my blog and I saw no activity in my stats, and I just couldn't be bothered with it or give it a real effort. Then I forgot all about it until April of last year, which I am kicking myself for. I just wish I had taken the time to learn the platform properly and give it a real chance. Because it takes time for you to gain followers, get in with publications, and get the Medium algorithm to pay attention to your articles. You just have to trust the process and stick with it by publishing quality content as consistently as you can. If you really dedicate yourself to the platform and give it a fair chance, your hard work will pay off. Truthfully, there are so many things that go into a successful Medium account, but these are the things I learned that really helped me get a handle on my own Medium strategy. So I hope you found this helpful and that got you excited about writing on Medium. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please feel free to ask away in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.